Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Elliot Katz. I'm a veterinarian, uh, uh, a graduate of Cornell University College of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, I'm also the founder uh, and president of Indefensive Animals. And some people, many actually, many people have asked me how I happen to uh, come as a veterinarian uh, to uh, start an animal protection, animal rights organization. And it happened some 27 years ago when I was noticed in the media, the local media in the San Francisco Bay Area, that a veterinarian, a campus veterinarian at UC Berkeley, uh, was under attack for refusing to sign U.S. Department of Agriculture documents. And his refusing to sign was putting the university in danger of losing millions of dollars of, uh, of federal funds. And the reason he was refusing to sign was that because <clears throat> the researchers were conducting delicate surgery on the brains of animals, on the eyes of animals, without sterilizing their equipment, without even washing their hands. And so the, the operations were resulting in, in the brain pockets of pus. He showed me images of pus draining out of the brain. Um, they were overcrowding in order to bring in federal dollars. They were overcrowding closets and just about every space on the campus. And because of the lack of sanitation, the lack of ventilation, viral and bacterial infections were just running rampant, and the animals were actually dying by the thousands sometimes, uh, sometimes only by the hundreds. It was just a, an amazing situation there. <clears throat> so I called him up uh, to, as, as a fellow veterinarian to see what I can do to help, and he showed me images and told me these horror stories about what was going on, and he actually, uh, after we finished talking, uh, he uh, put me in touch with a veterinarian that had resigned some two months before out of frustration that, again, no one would listen to him. They were actually locking, one of the, one of the research was actually locking him out of their laboratories and wouldn't let them see how they were conducting, how he was conducting his surgery. So I thought, oh, he, they asked for my help, I promised to do what I can. So I called up some of the faculty on the campus, <clears throat> some in the research department, and they said, Dr. Katz, uh, I, I've spoken out as much as I can. I, we can't speak out anymore. We're afraid of uh, retribution, uh, afraid of being fired. So I called up the philosophy department, and I called up, there was, at that time there was a peace department, and I asked them, can't, wh could you do something? Do you know what's happening within the research department? Uh, and they said, yes, we know, but <clears throat> we don't like to have another department tell us what to do, uh, as therefore we don't like to tell another department. If you can get them to start it there, well, then we can come on board and speak out. I said, they're afraid they won't. I'm, he said, I'm sorry, we just want to stay out of their business. <clears throat> so I was forced to basically start an effort outside of the campus. At first, I tried to work within the system. The next thing I know, the, I found out the university was actually going to the uh, state legislature to uh, asking for $40 million for uh, a new animal research facility. And to me, that was mind-blowing that they would, the, the, the administration and the researchers, particularly the administration, would be so inept and so grossly irresponsible the way they were allowing the, uh, the researchers to conduct themselves and blaming and attacking the, 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 my fellow colleague, the, the veterinarian, for trying to do an inappropriate job. And they, they were now asking for $40 million for another facility. <clears throat> so I... Um, uh, I saw that they were holding environmental impact uh, reports, uh, hearings. So I guess I was probably the first person to, within this, <clears throat> within this movement, to uh, think about challenging an environmental impact report. So I went, to the, I went to the hearings, I called a couple of people who were interested in animals, and they say, that's just going to be a waste of time. That, that's not going to, what does that mean? So anyway, I spoke because in an environmental impact report, you, there's also, it doesn't have, the, the facility doesn't have to be built, therefore you have no uh, 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 need to do the report. And so I spoke out saying it is not necessary, especially under the conditions. <clears throat> at, the end of the, at the end of the hearing, uh, uh, the head architect from UC Berkeley came over to me and said, Dr. Katz, I'd like to speak to you uh, about this situation. And he was the one who was presenting the new architectural drawings. He said, how about coming over to my house? And he was married, happened to be married to the president of Mills College. And so I went over to his house, he had tea and so forth. And as we, as we were talking, I noticed that in this coffee table, he had to put out some documents and some reports. 
And he said, excuse me, I've got to leave the room. And so, of course, I looked at the reports and they, could, they had all the information I needed to know to really go after the university. Uh, they had in, inside investigative reports and so forth. And then, so then he came back and sat down and uh, I said, uh, okay, let's continue. And I said, by the way, I looked at these reports. Would you mind if I made a copy of them? He said, no, that certainly would be okay. Anyway, that, that gave me a, a, the, really the start of, of, of how, to, how to go after and expose and had all the information that I, a great deal of it to go and bring all the, uh, the information up to the state legislature. And as a result, they ended up putting in supplemental budget language that wouldn't, they, they held back $39 million from the university for, for a whole year unless the university got accreditation or got a, 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 a good, um, a, 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 a good, um, not a credit, only accreditation, but a good, but were acknowledged that things had improved markedly. <clears throat> well, as it turned out, and the, and the, the, the chancellor of the university came up uh, to the state legislature, and uh, that was uh, Chancellor Heyman at the time, and he, and he indicated, oh, I thank Dr. Katz for showing us so much, and, and uh, we appreciate his work. And we really will improve things, and by the time next year, you can be sure that we will have improved all the conditions. <clears throat> well, uh, a, year, a year passed, uh, and of course, they hadn't. They were still locking the campus fed in there and out. They had actually called a cleaning crew in uh, to, uh, <clears throat> to clean the facility two days before the, the ALAC, this inspection group, uh, came in at, to basically fraudulently give the feeling that, that things were nice and clean. And the inspectors thought everything was looking good until they put their, one of them put their hands on top of the cages and found about two to three inches of dust and dirt and so forth. And then, what's this up here? And they had to admit so they, that they had tried to basically scam this accrediting agency. And uh, <clears throat> so the accrediting agency obviously was not going to give them accreditation, wouldn't even give them anything that said uh, that things had markedly improved. Um, uh, it turned out on a technicality, uh, something went out to the governor's office from the, from the local legislator and said, we've got to do something about this. We've, we've, got, we've got architects, we've got unions, we're waiting for this $39 million. We can't just, they, uh, can't just stop it. So they came up with a tech, they found a technicality that the, uh, this accrediting agency uh, uh, could only give uh, uh, their, their reports to the university. And the supplemental budget language had indicated that they were supposed to give it to the state. And because they weren't officially allowed to give it to the state, they said, oh, I guess we have to throw out that budget language. And they gave them the, the $39 million. It was, it was mind blowing. At any rate, what, during all this time, uh, with, the, with the, um, the veterinarian, the head veterinarian refusing to sign documents, they decided to, to hire a new veterinarian that would be above him, that would have the ability and responsibility to sign the documents that he was refusing. So, uh, so they put out a call to all the vet veterinarians who had the specialty in laboratory animal care to, uh, uh, to, and they put out that there was a paid position for $86,000, and this is like 28 years ago, uh, which was quite a bit of money for, for veterinarians working within the system. And uh, uh, so, he notified me of that, and so he gave me the list of the veterinarians that this, uh, that this uh, uh, request for uh, this job, uh, and uh, I sent out an, uh, a letter to all these veterinarians saying, please don't take the position, you'll be stabbing a colleague in the back. And uh, as it turned out, the, the head veterinarian from UC Davis took the job, you know, right within the university system, and eventually pushed out the, uh, the, the UC Berkeley veterinarian. But as a result of my letter, I got a call from the head veterinarian at Columbia University in New York, and he literally cried over the phone uh, with me. He said, Dr. Katz, you're the first person who's ever spoken out on behalf of veterinarians within the research community. And, and what he said after that just always r has rung in my ears as a veterinarian for the past 20, I guess 25 years. He said, us veterinarians, we're forced to become nothing but the pimps of the research community. 
And over the past 25 years, I've realized that the veterinary profession has, is not only uh, the pimp, acts are the pimps of the research community, the pharmaceutical community, but also the factory farming industry, the foie gras industry. They come out. People, unfortunately, in society think these veterinarians care deeply about other species, where in fact, when they work for these major exploitation industries, they are just become the apologists. They become the pimps. Maybe some of them coming in thinking they could do the right job, but they found out that they either do what they're told or they're out of there.